The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with the Family Theater, Incorporated, presents A Thief in the Night, starring Robert Walker and Harry Davenport. Edgar Kobach, president of the Mutual Network, is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. The story of family theater is a story of the power of prayer. The program began over a year ago. It came on the air with a simple conviction that one of the greatest needs in our day is a strengthening of the bonds of family life, that all of us need a reminder of how important is a daily quiet time in our homes, a time when a family gathers together for family prayer. There were some who were doubtful of the outcome of a program with such an inspirational purpose. Now over a year has passed, and the success of family theater is a wonderful tribute to the American people to the people of all faiths and creeds. Yes, there's encouragement and satisfaction for all of us in knowing that a program dedicated to family life, to the principles of better living, and to family prayer can become so popular. For with God in our daily lives, with daily family prayer in our homes, there's a new hope for unity and peace in the world. Edgar Kobach, president of the Mutual Network, will speak again following tonight's family theater presentation starring Robert Walker and Harry Davenport in A Thief in the Night. Yes? What do you want? Can I, uh, see the... Go away, please. You've no right coming up to the front door of respectable people. I want to see the judge. Judge Clayton. How'd you know he lives here? He gave me his name and address. He gave... Why, that's ridiculous. Yesterday I met him down at the railroad station. He asked me to come here. Well, if it's something to eat you want, go around to the back. I won't have you tracking up my parlors with your dirty shoes. Martha? 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 Yes, Judge? Is that someone for me, Martha? Yes, I'm sending him around to the back. Now, you go around and wait there. I'll get you something to eat. But I don't... I... Who was that, Martha? Oh, some disreputable-looking fella said you gave him your name and address yesterday. Why, some of these men are so bold, that I tell you... That must be Jack Fletcher. You didn't send him away. No, I told him to wait around at the back. Did you know him? I met him yesterday for the first time. Seemed like a fellow who could stand a little help. I'll go around and let him in. But, Judge, Judge, you're not going to bring him into the house. Why? What's wrong with him? Well, he's he's a hobo. Yes, but a very interesting hobo, Martha. Oh, Judge, a working slave to keep this place right and... Oh, well, I guess there's nothing I can do about it. I'm only the housekeeper around here. <laughs> oh, Martha, don't you want me to help someone if they're in trouble? We'll stay in the kitchen and keep out of the way. Oh, Judge, Judge, if you think I'll have nothing to do but have my kitchen all cluttered up, Jack! Oh, there you are. Uh, Judge Clayton, I uh, I was thinking maybe I should go along without disturbing you. Nothing of the kind. I'm glad you came. Come into the kitchen. Oh, Martha, you think you could possibly be able to m- get a bite for Mr. Fletcher? Nothing fancy, Martha. Just a snack. Oh, well, I guess so. But I can't do anything if you're going to stay here in my way. No, I understand, Martha. We'll go inside to my study. This way, Jack. You go right in. Thank you. When you've something ready, Martha, let me know. After your last experience with one of these fellows, Judge, I think you'd have learned a lesson. I'm always learning, Martha. I think maybe this time it's going to be different. Hmm. Uh, nearly five years, Judge. Yeah, it's uh, nearly five years. A good slice out of a man's life. Yeah. The best part of mine, wasted. One day after another, on the go and going nowhere. That's the way it's been. 
I've heard stories like that before. Well, judge for me, it's like I said. I saw you yesterday for the first time, see? And I had a feeling that you'd be someone who'd want to help a guy if he really meant business. And you really mean business? Yeah, Judge, I mean it. Oh, I've thought, yeah, and talked about picking myself up before. I always felt I could do it if I wanted to, but this time it's different. This time I... Well, I feel this is my last chance. I see. Now, get me right, Judge. Maybe you can't see how a guy will let himself go as a nobody for almost five years and keep telling himself tomorrow or next week or next month he's going to straighten out. Get himself a job and settle down. But it happens that way. That's how it's happened to me. Mm. So, you want me to give you enough money to start over again, eh? Well, not give it. It's an investment for you, Judge. Well, that's a big way to say it. And $150 is a big investment. Yeah, I know. But like I explained, by the time I get a good suit of clothes, well, I got to have enough to get back home and be able to make the right impression. Otherwise, I can't make a right start. I see. Well, 75 is more like what I could afford. Even that's more than I want to invest, unless I'm quite certain what I'm investing in. Oh. Well, that's uh, what you said yesterday, Judge. You wanted until today to think it over. Well, I've been thinking it over. But I, uh, well... Okay, Judge, I get it. I'll be on my way. Nice talking to you. I thought for a while maybe you really understood that I'm not just another down and outer, a guy who's finished. From appearances, I'd Yes, say... I know. I know what I look like. A bum. I was trying to convince you that I'm not, Judge. And I guess maybe trying to convince myself, too. And you're not convinced? Oh, our talk hasn't helped. Tell me one thing. Yeah? How did you start this way? <laughs> that isn't one thing, Judge. It's... Well, maybe you're right. Maybe it was one thing. You know, I guess at one time I was like a lot of guys. Something like this could happen to anyone else. It couldn't happen to me. That's how I thought. <laughs> it's funny. Looking back now, maybe I could say it all started the day I met Louise. You see, I was born in Avondale. That's just over the line in Arizona. I knew everybody in town. That is, until a friend of mine, uh, Chuck Nelson, opened his new restaurant on Main Street. Quite a place for our small town. Up to date, music and everything. Well, the first night it opened, I just had to go in and see what it was like. Hello, Chuck. Hi, Jack. Well, Chuck, you really carried through with your ideas. Uh, you got it nice here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pardon me, I see some people over there. I want... Oh, sure, I know how it is. Congratulations, Chuck. Good luck to you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I'll go sit and try your special dinner. What will you have, sir? Oh, hello. Uh, oh, you're new in Avondale, aren't you? Yes, sir. May I take your order? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to try the special dinner that's been advertised all over town. It's good, huh? Yes, sir. It's very good. What's your name? Louise, sir. Don't, sir, me. I'm Jack Fletcher. Oh, how do you do? I'll be right back with your order. Now, you wouldn't think, Judge, that out of a meeting as casual as that, that the most important thing in your life could happen. But it happened that way. I began making a habit of going to Chuck's place. Uh, well, it was mostly to meet Louise. And then she finally agreed to a date on one of her evenings off. The Ridgeway Circus was set up at the edge of town, so we drove out there together. I've been looking forward for weeks to an evening like this with you, Louise. I was afraid to say yes when you asked me to go out with you. Afraid? Well, everything in a town is so different. Oh, I guess living on the farm all my life, I... Well, you're here so oh, much. You're not afraid of me, are you? Well, I really don't know yet. Well, there's nothing much to know. I've lived in Avondale all my life, graduated from the high school, spent a year at State College. That didn't go so well, so I quit. Oh. Since then, I've tried three or four things, and now I'm trying the newspaper game with the Avondale Times. But that isn't what I want to do, Louise. No? No. I got some big dreams. I guess everybody has dreams sometimes. Yeah. But I've always been dreaming of things. Something I was going to invent or do. Something no one else could think of. I guess most of the things I thought of were pretty crazy. Things like what? Well, I got one big idea. It's really good. It's practical. It'd work if only I could... Oh, what is it? Well, you know how everybody quits work at, uh, say, about 5 o'clock? <laughs> everybody except waitresses. Yeah, well, anyway, this is for men only. Because I was thinking how most fellas stand around or play cards and waste two or three hours every evening, you know? Yeah. 
So I thought, well, a lot of fellas could get together. Say, a hundred of us in town here. That wouldn't be too hard. Well, what would they do? I'm coming to that. Now, you see all this unused land around the edge of town? Yeah. You're not thinking of starting a farm. I know what that means. No. What I want to do is build a resort. It'll bring a lot of visitors and put Avalon right on the map. You know our dry weather and everything? But I don't follow what you're getting Well, here's how it'd work. A hundred men working two or three hours a day for five days would mean 1,500 working hours a week. Yeah. Well, that'd be about the same as 40 men working eight hours a day all week. Well, what would you try to do? Well, we'd, we'd, we'd build this big resort. Oh, but you'd need land well, and Well, that's materials. just it. The city'd be glad to give it to us. It's not being used anyway. And then everybody'd get shares, just like in every corporation, depending on how much work or money they invested. Gosh, it sounds like a big thing, but I don't but know. But it'd work. I know it would. Hey, you really believe in it, don't you? Yeah. I've thought it out from every angle. A good resort here is bound to be a success. Oh, when you talk like that, you have me beginning to believe you. Well, that's what I need, Louise, more than anything else. Someone who'd believe in me. You know, most times people would have laughed when I told them about some ideas I had. I haven't laughed at you, Jack. That's what I like about you. You're someone who gives me faith in myself. Hey, there's the circus all set up. Gosh, this is the first time I've ever seen one. The first time? Yeah. Oh, you're going to have a lot of fun. Come on, let's go, Louise. Uh, we had a lot of fun together, Judge, Louise and I. And she was the one who gave me a new confidence in myself. I needed that. And she even talked me into going to Chuck Nelson about the idea of the resort. She got so she believed in it more than I did. So I called up Chuck and I told him I wanted to see him on some business. And Louise said she'd arrange to be around just in case she could put in a good word with her boss. Come in, Jack. Oh, thanks, Chuck. Oh, hello, Louise. Hi. Oh, Louise was telling me about your latest brainstorm. Oh, it's more than a brainstorm, Mr. Nelson. It's a wonderful idea. Why, well, you could build a new housing project that way. And a stadium, and... Why, well, you could have Avondale the biggest little town in the United States. You know, Louise, for a kid just off the farm, you're full of ideas, too. Well, it's Jack, uh, Mr. Fletcher, I mean, who has the ideas. Hey, you think this kind of thing would work, eh, Jack? I know it will. I've talked to a few fellas, and they're interested. They think it could be a lot of fun. Well, maybe that's where you're making the big mistake. This can't be something that's just a lot of fun. Business has always got to be business, and it's serious. Yeah, but with something like this, people first have to want to do it. They gotta like to do it. And what's wrong with too many jobs is that people don't get any fun out of what they're doing. This is gonna now, be... Now, just a minute. Who's gonna put up the money? That's where I thought you'd come in, Chuck. How much are you gonna put in it? All I got. Which is... Three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars? Why, well, this thing will cost at least twenty or thirty thousand, the way Louise tells it. Yeah, I know, that's a lot, but with everyone chipping in, we can raise all we need. You mean without any collateral or security except your harebrained idea? Well, when you say it that way, maybe it does sound fantastic, but... Fantastic? I'll... Huh. It's foolish. Well, thanks, Chuck. You don't think it's going to work even before you hear me say what it's going to be like. I guess that's my fault. I shouldn't have interfered and ruined everything. If you told him about the hotel and bungalows and the swimming it's pool It's not and... your fault, Louise. I, uh, I, I guess Chuck just wasn't really interested. Oh, but, Mr. Nelson, you seemed interested in it. I'm interested in a lot of things, Louise. Well, this is really something that could be done. I know it oh, could. Oh, don't talk about it anymore. Maybe I'll figure out something else. Uh, so long, Chuck. I'll be seeing you, Louise. Well, I felt pretty discouraged about that, Judge. But Louise didn't give up as easy as I did. She kept talking to everybody about it, and some of the prominent citizens started getting interested. J.P. Walton, vice president of the local bank. He was president of our Chamber of Commerce, too. Well, he made a speech about it at one of their meetings. Said it'd be a good thing for fellas like him to learn how to do a little carpentry and how to build a wall. And then the next thing you know, Chuck called me up. Said they were having a meeting. When I got down to his place, they had a lot of things organized, just as I'd planned them. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Now, I think everyone's got the idea of what we're going to try to do. As principal investor in this new corporation, I appreciate your having elected me president. Now, Mr. Fletcher may have a few words to say. <clears throat> Thank you. I can confidently uh, guarantee that this is going to be a profitable investment for everybody. For those who plan, for all of us who work, and for those who put up the capital. 
And those who do not have capital will receive shares according to the amount of work they do, just as if they were investing money instead of labor. I think everyone understands the details of how it's going to work. What we need now is the work. <laughs> well, that was the way it got started, Judge, and it caught on. Everything was going fine. Louise and I were even talking about getting married when the resort was finished. And then, bang, the war broke. I was one of the first to go, so I left everything in Chuck's hands, made arrangements for him to have power of attorney for the group. I knew he'd do a good job. He always made a success out of everything he tried. Then, while I was overseas, they finished the resort. And what happened? The Army took it over as a special training center, and Chuck, lucky guy that he always was, was given an assignment in his own hometown. But I don't know, I, I was happy. I, I had a lot to look forward to. I'd have capital when I got back, and I'd have Louise. At least I thought I would. Although I got doubtful when for no reason at all their letters stopped coming. I couldn't wait to get my part of it over and get back home. And the day finally came. I didn't tell anyone. No one except Mom that I was coming. Didn't want any fanfare. I figured I'd be about the first guy coming back to Avondale. Mom! Mom! Jack! Oh, oh Jack! Mom. Oh, I can't tell you how happy I feel. Honest, I didn't let anyone know you were coming. Oh, that's good. That's good, because all I want to do is sleep for about five days. And eat? Oh, gee, I've been looking forward to this, Mom. How is everyone? How, uh, how's Louise? Well, uh, well, son, she, she hasn't been coming around for some time now. I guess she's busy with different things. You've been hearing from her, haven't you? Uh, yes, uh, off and on. What's wrong between you and Louise, Jack? I don't know, Mom, I don't know. But I still think she's the most wonderful girl in the world. And that's the way I felt, Judge, about Louise. Maybe Mom knew more than she wanted to say. I never found out. Because things started to happen fast after that. They started that afternoon when I got into some old clothes and took a walk through the town. Hiya, Sam. Oh, Jack Fletcher. Uh, Where'd you drop from? Oh, I'm back, Sam. For good. Well, it'll need to be for good. Because there are a lot of people in this town who think you gave them a bad deal. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the resort. Well, didn't the Army lease it? You mean Isn't... the Army bought it? Oh, don't play possum, Jack. Everyone knows you were in on the deal with Chuck Nelson. You set it up with him so he could sell out and pay everyone off in pennies. Is that what happened? You're right, it happened. Maybe people won't want to say much to you, but they did a lot of thinking about your smart idea of a double cross. Thanks, Sam. I'm beginning to learn how things operate around here. <laughs> I had a lot to learn, Judge. I'd left the working of everything in Chuck's hands. I'd signed the papers, not realizing that I was turning over the right of sale to him. Oh, I guess there were others in on it with him, but most of us didn't realize that we gave him sole right as president to sell out and pay off with, with a reasonable return for investment. I was going to give Chuck a rough time, and I was going to start legal action when he offered me my reasonable return, but suddenly everything blew up in my face. It was Louise who set off the explosion. Louise, where have you been? I, I tried to see you. I phoned you. Jack, I was afraid to see oh, you. Oh, leave. I, I can't tell you how happy I am. Please let me go on, Jack. I know you won't understand what I've done. Why I've done it, but I... Well, Louise, what's... What's happened between us? There was no knowing when you would come back, Jack. If you would come back... I was so close to Chuck and... Chuck I... again. You married him? Yeah. But we kept it a secret. Don't because... say any more. Get out. Get out fast before I do something I'll be sorry for. Well, that's most of the story, Judge, because some of what happened after that is too hazy to remember. I planned a lot of things I was going to do for revenge. Even thought of killing the two of them. I could have done it then, but I didn't. I didn't even bother taking the thing to court, although I knew I could win the case. After what Louise had done, I couldn't fight anymore. Instead, I became the town bum. 
Maybe that was a funny thing to do, but I guess I was pretty mixed up at the time, and I figured it a funny way. I was going to get my revenge by letting them see me every day, letting them see what they'd done to me. But it didn't work out the way I thought it would, because what happened was, well, I hadn't been home for several days, and I guess I must have looked pretty far gone. I was walking down the street, and as I turned the corner, there was Mom. Jack. Oh, Jack, what are you doing to yourself? Hello, Mom. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Don't, don't worry about me. How can you say that? Jack, if you won't do something for yourself, do it for my sake. I want you to come home with me. No, no, Mom. You, you, you don't understand. I got unfinished business. I got to take care of a couple of people. Son, you're not hurting anyone except yourself and me. I took a long time to learn that, Judge. And then I figured that the best way to make a comeback was to get out of town and straighten out. Then I'd go back and take a good, solid case to court. A case I knew I could win. But I kept putting it off ever since. It's a lonely life, Judge, with bitterness and hatred in your heart. And I began to realize a lot of things. How Louise had a right to live her own life. How I owed something to a number of people who had trusted me and... How oh, I owed something to myself. You see, Judge, what happened was I just couldn't take it then, but I can now. That's why I want to go back. I see. Now, now get me right, Judge. I, I can win this case. I think you can. If it's exactly as you say, that this Chuck was given power of attorney, which is a trusteeship. Now, in the first place, a trustee can never profit from his trust. We could get witnesses. Army authorities would certainly cooperate. And if necessary, there'll be no difficulty getting the Attorney General's office to investigate. You see... Oh, that's probably Martha. Come in. Judge, if this friend of yours wants something to eat, it's ready. Thank you, Martha. Well, I, uh, I really don't want anything to eat, Judge. I'd like to get started. Now, uh, if you can see your way clear to... Shh, she'll hear you. I don't want her to know I'm giving you anything. All I can make it is $100. That should get you started, and you'll be in touch with me. I think I have 100 here in my safe. Judge Clayton, I can't stand around here all afternoon. I got shopping to do. Go ahead, Martha. I'll see Jack out. Well, uh, 100 will be all right, Judge. I can get a new suit and some things here in town and ride a freight back. I, I'm used to that. I wish it could be more. Oh, I'll make it all right. I should be in Avondale by morning. <laughs> Good morning, Judge. Morning, Martha. Ah, what's wrong this morning, Judge? Oh, you look all tired out. Stayed up too late last night doing a little research on power of attorney and trusteeships. Hmm. Uh, I guess I'm not as young as I used to be, Martha. No. Maybe you're getting foolish in your old age, too. I heard you whispering to that tramp in there yesterday. How much did you give him? Why, Martha, I'm surprised you'd be eavesdropping. My hearing's good, Judge. I know what's going around this house. But you never want my advice. I'm only the housekeeper. Why, Martha, I always appreciate your advice, but sometimes... You didn't take my advice two months ago when you gave that fellow $25. And all he wanted to do was get home and he'd return it. And what happened? Well, that was something different. That is, uh... I'll get it, Martha. Mm, someday one of these fellows will get in here and he'll come back in the night and that'll be the end of all of us. A Judge Clayton speaking. Uh, this is Captain Winters, state police. Yes? Judge, we had a report on a very strange case this morning. We think you can help us. Can we come over immediately? I'll be right here, Captain. Well, we'll see you in a few minutes. Captain Winters, I haven't seen you in some time. What can I do for you? I'm sorry to disturb you at home like this, Judge, but uh, we're rather puzzled. And this is urgent. Yes? We got a report this morning from Avondale. It's a little town just over the Arizona state line. I've heard of it. It seems they picked up a fella there. You know, the regular freight riders. Strange part of it, he had a new suit of clothes. Whole new outfit wrapped up in a box. And $40 in his pocket. Only means of identi identification was a piece of paper with your name and address on it. So we thought yes, that... Yes, I think I know who it is. His name is Jack Fletcher. Well, he must have fallen asleep and got jolted off where the freight was stopping. Did a pretty nasty job on him. You... you mean he was killed? That's right, Judge. 
We thought you could identify him yes, if we... I can identify him. I'll go to Avondale. Hmm, besides, there's a job I've got to do there. A job for a forgotten hero. Hero? You mean there's Fletcher? Hmm. <laughs> uh, he was only a hobo. In a way, he was a hero, too. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you never know about these guys. And I guess nobody cares much. Well, sometimes they deserve a break, and the chance you give them is the last chance they'll get. And maybe the last chance you'll have to give. You know, it comes like a thief in the night. What's that, Judge? I mean death. Sometimes it comes like that. Here is our family theater host for tonight, president of the Mutual Network, Edgar Kobach. Tonight's play reminded me of how, in real life, people who have all the qualifications for success sometimes become discouraged and give up trying. And yet there's a way to success in the wonderful help of prayer. We need God's help, all of us do, if there's to be vision in our planning and purpose in our achievements. Prayer is true, doesn't prevent all difficulties and troubles but it enables us to rise above obstacles, and it brings peace to our hearts. Yes, and praying together as a family brings peace and unity into our homes. This is the theme of family theater, a conviction so many of us share. I want to take this opportunity to thank all here in Hollywood and all throughout the country who have helped in the success that family theater has attained. For it is through your efforts and work we have been given these beautiful, powerful precepts the family that prays together stays together. The world at prayer will be the world at peace. Good night, and God bless you. Our thanks to Robert Walker and Harry Davenport for their performances this evening, and to Mark Carney for writing tonight's play. Music was scored and conducted by Max Tear. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Louise Arthur, Gail Bonney, Bob Purcell, Gwen Delano, and Ed Rand. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Lee Bonnell and Gail Storm in The Unsung Hero. Your hostess will be Mona Freeman. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us again next week at the same time when our Family Theater stars will be Lee Bonnell and Gail Storm with Mona Freeman as hostess. Larry Chatterton speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.